welcome to episode 22 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I'm coming to you from my yarn store located in central Alabama, USA. Uh, my store is called Paper Crane Yarns and that is my hand dyed yarn label as well. I also make project bags and I carry a selection of other uh, work, some, some goods, yarns, notions, things like that from some amazing independent artists and other um, fantastic companies. You can find my shop um, in person in Alabama or you can go to papercraneyarns.com and shop my selection there. You can also find me on Instagram and Ravelry and now Facebook as Paper Crane Yarns. I'll have all those links down below and um, yeah, just today I actually finally formed a Ravelry group, so I'm really excited about that. I will make sure to have that linked below and I hope that you all will join so that we can have some um, awesome chat threads and photo threads going where we can um, share our work with each other and I would love to see the projects that you guys are working on and I think that would be an awesome way for us to have more direct communication and um, we can all be friends there. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you'll join the, the group and I will get some starter threads going just so we can introduce ourselves and um, say hello and yeah, so check that out. Um, yeah, it's late in the evening. I usually record my podcasts in the morning. Today is November 1st, 2022 and um, I've closed shop for the day. I just finished dyeing up some yarn. So I wanted to try to squeeze in a little, maybe a shorter episode today. I haven't had any time to record. So yes, my podcasts have been few and far between, but um, I did hit 500 subscribers this last time I posted an episode. So that was pretty cool. Um, so hi, if you recently joined here, um, I really appreciate it. That was super awesome. And if you're watching this now and haven't yet subscribed, but would like to, that's also really cool. Um, so thank you for checking me out today. Okay. Why don't we talk about some yarn and some knitting and things of that nature. <laughs> so to begin, let me drink some of my coffee. I'm drinking a black cup of coffee. I was going to put oat milk in it, but it turned out uh, it went bad. So now it's just a black coffee. That's okay. So today I am wearing knitwear. I have on one of my Love Note sweaters by Tin Can Knits. And this yarn is from Yarn Hero. This is their Stipple DK in the Movie Night colorway. And um, yes, I knit this a few months ago, I, I want to say I knit this when I was nine months pregnant. Um, super, super quick knit. I got the wool at Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival this year, um, and I really, really love it. So it's absolutely beautiful. It's her, the, the dyer's process. Um, I believe what they do is they dye the, the wool. They just dye it in the wool first, and then they spin it. So you get this beautiful marling and um, at their booth at Maryland Sheep and Wool, they had this exact sweater in this colorway knit up and because I am a sucker for booth samples, I of course had to make it myself. Um, so I, I showed this a couple episodes ago, I think maybe two episodes ago, and I had another love note that I finished at the same time in a fingering weight, um, held double with a, a mohair lace weight, and I really liked the fabric on that one. I love the fabric on this one too, but so this is a DK weight yarn and I'm not super in love with the size of this sweater. So I have been considering ripping it out and redoing it. Uh, my only hesitancy is that this is a, this is not a super wash yarn. And so it's beautiful and lovely, but it is already pilling. Um, and I think even on the skein, it said something about how over time, because of the nature of this wool, it would pill or even um, felt a little, which, those are all fine and good. I don't mind that, but um, I'm hesitant to rip it out because I'm not sure if the fibers will hold up really well if I do that and then try to re-knit it. But I, so I knit the second to smallest size and I wish that with this yarn, I would have knit the smallest size because the amount of positive ease in this sweater is pretty tremendous. Um, I mean, it's far more than the pattern calls for. So it, it looks 
more like a big sweatshirt. So I don't know. I can't quite decide. I do like it and I the the sleeves are perfect. They're everything that I like in a sleeve, but the body, I just don't think it's super flattering on me. Um, so I don't know, still thinking about that, but I am wearing it today and enjoying it. Maybe I'll just keep the sweater as is and knit a third one in a gauge and a yarn that I would like better and just keep this one as kind of like my sweatshirt version and the other ones can be my elegant, more fitted ones. I don't know, that's probably the best idea. I have uh, ripped out sweaters before and re-knit them, so I could do it again, but. Okay, so I guess I will show my one finished object. So I have talked about this project um, many episodes ago and it is a crochet project, which I don't do a lot of um, crochet. It's not really my thing, but if I'm going to make a blanket, it will be crochet. So uh, a long, long time ago, I be before I ever had my baby or even thought about having my baby, I bought some yarn from Hobby and because, because I loved this um, baby blanket pattern and I thought I'll just make it and hold on to it or maybe somebody I know will have a baby and eventually it'll be a gift. Regardless, I, I just wanted to make the project. So um, I started the project and when I got nearly finished with the yarn, it tangled into such a mess that it took me two years to untangle it. But I was very dedicated a couple days ago and I ended up just taking this big massive um, bunch of just tangled, probably fingering weight yarn and I managed to untangle it and I made a lot of little tiny balls. Um, I had to cut out sections and then I wound it into a big cake and so I was able to finally finish this project which is very exciting because I have a three month old baby and this is for her and I've, um, I've given it to her and she loves it. When I put this on her, she is so excited her face lights up and she like sucks on it and she just loves this blanket so i need to finish up um i just finished it yesterday and there's a few little oh i think there might be a little hole yeah there's a few little places that i need to go fix up where i had all of the different bits of yarn um tied together into a cake so um I've, i have little ends sticking out on this side of the rainbow and like the other side's all perfect and fine because I had no issues with the yarn. But yes, I need to go through and just kind of touch up this spot and do some finishing things and then give it back to her because she really does love it. So it's this beautiful gradient rainbow project. Um, I did lose a lot of the red from my big yarn cake, but um, before when I stopped on this project, I was here. So all of this was a mess. And like I said, I did lose some of the yarn, but this added about six inches or so of, of length to the whole project. So I'm glad I stuck with it and finally got it done because it's beautiful and I'm happy to have it for her. I mean, it's so bright, it's just cheerful and um, lovely. So it's the Ziggy Blanket Pattern by Hobby. And this is in one of their, I think it's a giant twister cake. And I've used some other products like this from them before. And every single one so far has tangled in the same way. So if I were you, and if you love this as much as I do and want to make one for yourself, I say go for it and buy the buy the yarn. I think this is the Martian pink colorway. But what I would recommend doing is either by hand or with a ball winder, wind off sections of the gradient, like maybe each color. And I know that kind of inconveniences the process because the idea is that you've got this nice big cake of a gradient yarn and you can just crochet or knit and achieve all the color changes. But the amount of stress and <laughs> Um, tangling that this yarn did. I think what I would do next time would be to wind off sections of the color or maybe even if you just do um, like two colors into a cake so that way you can still maintain some of that easiness but I would definitely divide it and not work from the giant cake because it's very susceptible to this. In fact when I talked about this before on an episode somebody in the comments if not multiple people said they had the same experience so just keep that in mind if you plan on doing this project or a similar one with a similar kind of yarn. Um, Yes, it's been years since I bought it, so I can't quite remember all the details, but it was like a huge, huge, big cake of yarn. Again, it was all this gradient, and it is like a fingering weight, I believe. And I want to say that this is half cotton and half acrylic, but I, I don't quite recall. So yeah, this is the Ziggy Blanket, and I'm just so happy to have it done. I love, so you can see the, the way that the color changes is you'll have sections where you'll have a solid tone, so all of the strands are one color, and then, um, so say this was a, a four ply, then it would go to three, uh, three ply of that solid color and then introducing one strand of your next color. And then it would go to like three of the next color and one of the original color. And then, um, yeah, keep 
fading that way. So really super beautiful. And it looks super vibrant on the screen and it really is that vibrant. This is so eye-catching. Um, okay, that's enough of this, but I had to show it because I'm just so happy that I got this done. Um, I think I felt inspired because a lot of people on YouTube right now, people whose podcasts I've been watching, are kind of going through and clearing out old whips for the year and preparing for going into 2023, which is only a couple months away at this point, with uh, clean needles and empty project bags. So um, I'm not one to have many projects at a time, and I don't really have any long-term whips except for this one. So I feel very accomplished that it's done. So I have two works in progress to share with you today. One is a new cast on and the other is my Stephen West M. Cowell. All of the clues are out for that now. So nothing I will show will necessarily be a spoiler, but I'm sure you know the drill. If you would like to forego seeing my Westnitz M. Cowell, um, I'm, I'm only on clue two. So that can give you an indication perhaps. I'll put a number on the screen and that will tell you what timestamp to skip to if you would like to skip ahead. But if you were like me, you'd probably watch this anyway because I can't help but ruin the, the clues for myself every week. Um, I'm, I'm one of those because the concept of the MCAL is amazing and I love it. And it's, it is still like a mystery, even if you do look ahead, but I can't help but look ahead. I just can't because I want to know where it's going. I want to know that it's worth it because this project is a beast. <laughs> So I'm using one of my project bags. This was from my latest shop update. These are all sold out. So thank you guys for, for purchasing these. This is my favorite too. So I'm, I'm glad they got just as much love as I love them. This one sold out first out of all of the different ones I sewed. So yeah, I'm putting my West Knits in here. And actually the project is beside me because I didn't want to shove it in the bag and take it out on camera. So I'll just show you quickly the yarns that I do have in here. So for this project, for this project, uh, my three colorways are Plum Tree, and these are all my hand dyed yarns. This is Plum Tree on a Merino Singles Base. And this is Woodfire Clay, also on Merino Singles. And this is my uh, Ginger Carrot Cake, and this is my accent color. So this is my color palette, and I love it. It's super um, feminine and autumnal and just gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I would like. I like lipsticks in this color. This would be, that would be a fun lipstick too. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not flattering for me, but I would like it. So I, I'm finally going to finish Clue 2 pretty shortly. I have been working on this project pretty exclusively um, and it really is difficult to get it all straightened out to look at it. There's just yarn everywhere. Um, okay, so I'm almost done with clue two. I only have two rows left on my first, I only have two rows left on my first cable uh, section here, this cable at the bottom, and then I can bind off for this one. And then I'll pick up the stitches on this side and knit my cable portion over here. So this section in the center, I'm trying not to talk, I'm, I'm trying not to cover my mouth as I speak. Um, this section in the center is clue one, and I'm not going to even lament on how ridiculously annoying this section was because I think most people have already expressed that. I'm very behind on podcasting and um, I'm sure you've, if you're not knitting, you're, um, if you are not yourself knitting it, you've probably heard others who are about how kind of horrible this section was to knit. Um, that was maybe the first time I ever was not having fun knitting, but it was worth it because I really do like the way it looks. So I'm not too upset at Steven for that. Um, but yeah, this was, so this was clue one and it was a lot. It was hard. There's so much beautiful texture in this section. Um, I just love these braided eye cords. Uh, it was worth all of the casting off and uh, ca binding off and casting on. It was worth all of the many, many steps to do that. I'm sorry, my needles are hitting the ground. So um, I've got, I've been working on weaving in my ends. I still have a few more to put in. I did not carry my yarn in these stripes. So I do love these little wing sections with the uh, accent stripe. It's so far the only portion where I've used my accent color. Um, I'm already on my second skein for the main color, which is the purple. I think that's the main. Yeah, that's the main. So I'm already on my second one for that and I'm nearly on my second for the wood fire clay. So I'm hoping I'll have enough yarn I've never run out of yarn before for one of these kinds of projects, 
Um, so we'll see. I hope I have enough. My favorite portion though is this cable section. I think with the plumpness of the Merino Singles yarn, the cables look really very beautiful and I appreciate Stephen's insight in the Clue One video where he said that he recommends using your lighter color as your contrast because that way it will help the cables to pop. So, um, so yeah, this is really amazing and if you've never cabled before and want to try some pretty easy cables, I think I would recommend, even if you don't knit the whole pattern, maybe looking at the pattern if you have a copy or want to get your hands on a copy um, because it's only a four, there's only four rows in this portion where you actually use a cable needle and cable stitches and before I knew how to knit cables if I were to hear that I would not follow along but like I wouldn't understand I think so um, in case that's how you feel there's four rows where you actually use a cable needle and um, cable your your front you know or put do a front cable or a back cable um, but then the, all the other rows until your next one you actually just purl your pearls in your knit so that's how you build up the, the cable braid essentially I guess with this kind of cable pattern so um, this was actually quite quite easy and the payoff is beautiful and I definitely intend on doing the accent um, I-cord braid the loop option that he offers to um, carry this color this orange into here I think that'll be really beautiful and if for whatever reason I don't like it I can just take it out but I don't anticipate that so that is my Stephen West 22 MCAL I am really excited. I have looked ahead at the whole project. I wasn't sure at first if I would like the stripes, but I think that they are just intricate and interesting enough to work. Um, plus I've seen styled photos of the finished shawl and I have to say, I think that this is one of the best I've ever seen from Stephen West in terms of shape. The shape is super unique and very intriguing and I was apprehensive but now that I've seen it styled I think it's such a flattering shape and it looks very easy to wear because of how well it just um, wraps around the body so it's got a lot of width to it so yeah I I'm excited about this one hopefully by the next time I'm here I'll have at least finished oh <laughs> at least finished clue two that's my goal I'm not going to try to race to the finish line with this one because it is so much knitting and I am happy with where it's going and I'm not in a huge hurry to get it so I'll just work on this oh, yeah I love this project I really do I I loved shawlography but I I love this one more maybe it's mostly my color choices but it's been a lot of fun to knit and yeah I really do love the color choices I think I would love to have a sweater out of these same colors or something similar so my next work in progress is in another one of my project bags. Um, this was one that I sewed quite a while ago now, in, back in April or March. And I cast on for my first knitted gnome, which is really exciting for me because I've been collecting gnomes for 12 years. And I have quite a few, but none that were hand knit by me. I am knitting the Gnome de Plume, and this is by Sarah Shira. And I apologize if the name's incorrect. Um, I will have it on the screen in terms of pronunciation. I believe it's Sarah Shira, but she's definitely the gnome knitter. So I'm excited to be knitting her pattern. So I'm knitting this guy with a tiny leaf on the top of the hat. And so far I have most of the hat finished and um, you know, it's a little bit hard to see all that beautiful texture in there because the yarn that I'm using is a mini that I got from Indian Tangled last year. This came in the goodie bag, so to speak, if you purchased one um, uh, from the first, the, the, the ticket tier that gave you the bag and all of the little yarns. So this was from Yarn Over New York was the dyer for this one. And I'm not a huge fan of blues, uh, especially these kinds of sort of royal blue. It's not really a color I like so much. So I wanted to use these minis for something like this sort of project and there's lots of micro striping happening because this yarn is dyed sort of as an ombre style so lots of little micro stripes but you can kind of get those little budding textures and I think I've reached a point in the hat that we're starting to go into the decreases and eventually it'll come to that point and then I will stuff it and you can see there like there's this rolled stockinette edge so I believe I'll be picking up stitches for the body and yeah, 
I don't, I can't remember. I think you pick up. I don't think you graft, but we'll see. I'll, I'll be there shortly. So I've been kind of working on this when it's the middle of the night and my baby wakes me up and won't let me go back to sleep because I don't have enough mental energy for the West knits. Um, but I would like to knit something interesting and not just a pair of socks. So that's my gnome de plume. And um, I don't have my other colorways with me in this bag, so I will make sure to show you next time when I hopefully have more of the gnome done. So that was just a nice quick little whip that I could share with you. So now I'm going to be talking about the cast on that I will be doing um, possibly tomorrow, probably more like later on this week or this weekend. I was planning on hosting a whole knit along, a punch along is what I was gonna call it, for our swancho along for knitting swanchos because um, if you saw my last episode, I just finished the Cottage Swancho by Olga Putano and I really love it and wanted to keep that party going and bring it to you guys, but I have had, uh, I've been really overwhelmed with work, um, all the things that I've been having to do and um, child care and just taking care of my baby and so I, I didn't have time to formally set it up. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cast on, but I'm going to make plans to host that knit along, hopefully in the beginning of the new year, so we'll see. Um, there's so many knit alongs going on right now that I think people won't mind if I don't put that one in. I, I hadn't, I hadn't announced it yet really. So, um, hopefully I'm not letting anybody down because I did make a little announcement on Instagram, but now I'm having to take it back. Sorry. If you are going to knit a swancho, we can maybe do it on my Ravelry group because I know that one of my friends, Tammy, who comes to knit night, she is doing the herbalist with me. That's my next cast on is the herbalist by Olga Putano. And so we're going to be knitting them. So hopefully somebody will feel like joining in. And if so, then leave me a comment or we'll, we'll figure something out. I think the harder thing about doing a knit along is getting the word out there that there's going to be one in order to get the participation. Once it gets going, it's fine. It's I'm sure rather easy to manage, but again, it's getting the word out. And I failed to do that because I wanted to cast on, I wanted the cast on date to be today, November 1st and end February, 2023. But again, it's getting the word out. So these are yarns that I dyed and I'm very excited about them. So this base is a um, alpaca cashmere silk. So it is extremely soft. Um, so the light is blowing everything out. Let me turn off the light real quick so you can see them. It's getting dark outside, so the lighting might have to be adjusted. They're still a little blown out. Hopefully we'll get the new ones. These are incredibly soft. Um, so this pattern calls for three colors. So my main color is a dark gray brown. And then my second color is this bright um, gold. It, it looks sort of like a neon yellow on the screen, but it's definitely a gold mustard kind of shade. There we go. Yeah. So that is my other color. And then my last color is this lavender. So, oh, it's a heart. That's cute. <laughs> okay. So those are my yarns and I am desperate to cast on this project. Um, I really have not had much knitting time being a new mom. Um, if you've watched my previous episodes, I tend to knit a lot and I get a lot done, but not currently. And that's okay. I'm just having to slow down my pace and all of that. But I am excited when I will get the Cassies on. Um, I might go ahead and wind them up tomorrow and just carry them around and hopefully cast on the herbalist as soon as possible. So that's going to be the herbalist by Olga Putano. So the rest of what I'm going to show is uh, purchases. And these are things that I've gotten over the course of the past few months because my last podcast that I recorded, which was a month ago, if not longer, I had some of this stuff already and I forgot to show it and that's okay, but I'm just going to show it all now. So hopefully the lighting doesn't look too crazy. I am not used to filming at night and so I'm not super accustomed to how to set up the lights right now. So bear with me if it looks a little bit ridiculous. So I, I've had this for a while now. This is a Labyrinth Project bag by Lila or Lila Styles. I hear it both ways. I'm not sure. Um, yes, this is my amazing Labyrinth Project bag that I love very much. And um, I love Labyrinth very much. So naturally anything 
labyrinth themed I'm going to have a hard time staying away from and so long dog yarn had a labyrinth collection and that's how I found long dog yarn I wasn't familiar with them before um, and by the time I found them, they had already done their Labyrinth collection. So I assumed that I missed it. And then they did a Disney villain collection. And I was looking at that because there were some beautiful colorways, lots of purples and things that I'm interested in. And then I happened to see that some of the Labyrinth colorways were coming back. So I got two of them and they are incredible. <laughs> I really, really love these. And now there's a particular die from Dharma dies that I would like to purchase because I'm quite sure that's what's used here and I've been meaning to get it for a long time but it's been out of stock some, some of the smaller containers have been out of stock when I've purchased dies in the past so hopefully it's available because I've had my eye on it and now I feel like I have to get it because I too want to do that die <laughs> um, yeah so these are the bounce sock bases it's a 75 25 merino nylon. I think it's actually the same base that I sell in my shop um, because the yardage is the same and I have not seen this yardage on a different from a different seller. So I'm not sure. I think this is what I what I sell. Um, this is listed at 463 grams per uh, I wish yards per 100 grams. Um, the base that I carry is 462 so I, it might be the same. It feels the same. But anyway this is the You Remind Me of the Babe colorway and it's my favorite. I really, really love it. It looks like that in person. Um, that is not a trick of the camera. It really has those super neon bright speckles, and I wish that I could have afforded a sweater quantity in this because I would have done it. It's beautiful. And the other one is As the World Falls Down. So this one has a gradient, so it fades to this creamy, kind of lavender, like a very light lavender shade with those beautiful speckles. And the side is very lavender with those fluorescent purple speckles. So these are really pretty together. And um, I can't decide if I'm going to add this into my What the Fade, which is the shawl by Andrew Mowry that I purchased yarn from Lambstrings for not too long ago. I haven't started that yet, so I could build these into my fade and take something out or I could cast on I could pair it with something else in my stash or from my selection um, to do something else I haven't decided I was kind of thinking I might do a muscle burra hat in this colorway because I could see myself wearing this frequently and I am NOT a hat person so if I'm going to knit a hat I want it to be one that I really love and I, I think the ones I've seen that are knit with speckled hand dyed yarn are really beautiful. Um, and you know, I know that's a very trendy pattern. I would like to present to you guys something maybe you don't see all the time. I know I get kind of bored, especially right now during the MCAL season and everybody's knitting the same thing. And so everywhere you turn, you kind of see everybody else's version. It's fun, but you know, there's so much variety out there and we all want to see the, the different options. But I do think I will have to knit one of those hats because it really does seem like it's probably a good knitting staple. So stay tuned. I, man, I wish I could cast on all the things. I'm used to having maybe three or so projects on the needles and I, I work pretty uh, mono uh, mo monogamously <laughs> on one at a time. So I'm trying to be, stay, stay true to my West Knits but I would like to knit my, my next swancho and this muscle burra hat. I used to be able to knit so much, I miss all the knitting. It's a fair and happy trade-off because I have my baby and that's you know all I could have ever hoped for, but I, I do miss, I miss knitting. So yeah, um, whatever the project is, I'll definitely use my labyrinth bag. Okay. Now here, so this is a project bag that I love that I that was part of my fall collection, but I did not mean to keep one necessarily. I put this one up for sale and I realized that there was a mistake on the inside. It's not a big mistake, but I knew it was one that wouldn't necessarily be worth fixing 
because it would have been kind of difficult since it involved the lining. I sew pockets into these bags and I forgot to sew the divides in the fabric panel to make pockets. So now there's just one giant pocket in there and then the main compartment. So it's almost like it has two main compartments, which is fine, but it's not how I advertise the bag. So I took this one off the shop and decided to keep it. Um, so yes, I have one of these now. And in here I have some really beautiful uh, yarns to show you. The colors together look very um, like earth tones and autumnal and very lovely. Uh, so yeah, I recently purchased all of these and then I added this in for a project that I also am planning on casting on sometime soon. So first I'll show you these yarns that I got in Florida from the Destin yarn store and I'm not sure if she's still open. When I went in she told me she was preparing to close her brick and mortar and she was going to be selling at a sort of like a larger, I don't know if it's consignment or it's one of those interesting um, shops where you go and there's lots of different types of vendors. I think she's moving into one of those, so she may have already done that. But I got these at Destin Yarn not too long ago. And these are for the Frog and Toad knitting pattern, which I have had my eye on for many, many years. I very much love uh, Wind in the Willows and Frog and Toad and all of those beautiful storybook universes as I'm sure many of you do. So I got the yarn to knit Frog, who is my favorite. I'll be knitting Frog first. Um, these are all Barocco yarns. So these two skeins are the Inca Gold line and this one is Fiora. So they're different bases, but they seemed similar enough that I could pair them all together. So of course this will be Frog's body and I want to say that this was the frog's uh, sweater or jacket, and this is frog's pants, I do believe. Um, I think I'm a little bit short on yardage for frog's body, so I am hoping that this is enough, but if it's not, um, since some of frog is covered with clothing, I think I could introduce a different color. <laughs> not that I would want to, but I could if I had to, somewhere that the, the clothing would conceal the, the different color. And then I was thinking I might hold Oh, you know, I think this might be Frog's pants and this is Frog's jacket because I was thinking I would hold this Ito Sensei double with this color to make a fuzzy, adorable jacket. And if I could find some green mohair soon, some inexpensive green mohair, I might make Frog's body fuzzy too, like the Claire Garland frog pattern that everybody's been knitting. Um, yes, so this will be Frog one day and then I still have to collect yarn for Toad. Um, I'm super excited. I think this is like a 15 page long pattern or even more. It comes with lots of instructions and um, I love the amigurumi and, and dolls and all of that, especially the animals. I have been wanting to knit these for a long time. So that will be a fun project. And the last thing I have with me to show, um, because I also do have two books that I have failed to bring once again. So these are uh, what I got from the Craftivists in Atlanta, which I featured a clip of in my last episode. If you want to go back and see a little brief tour of the Craftivists in Atlanta, the yarn store there. Um, but when I visited, I got five skeins of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Blanket Fort colorway, um, which I had never seen in person. I'd only seen this online, so I really loved seeing this. Um, I think Brooklyn Tweed looks, for the most part, very different online than it does in person. Um, Something about the white balance of their photos really throws off the color of the yarn, I think, because I have purchased yarn from them many times at this point, um, different colorways each time, and they don't ever seem to match what's online. That's just my experience. Not that I've ever received a bad color, but yes, they are, they're never quite as I expect. So the color I've wanted most out of all of them has been postcard, but I've been waiting to purchase it in person to make sure it's as pretty as I think it is. Um, that one just seems like a hard colorway to photograph in general because when I look on Ravelry, every project that uses that color looks completely different. So there's something about the way that that colorway plays on the camera that I can't quite figure out. And this color was like that for me too, so I'm happy to have seen it in person and it is very lovely. It's um, This is a very purple episode. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I have a couple of projects I've thought of with this. When I purchased these, she only had five skeins, so it's not quite a full sweater quantity, but 
when I knit my uh, getaway cardigan by Alicia Plummer out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter that I showed my last episode, I have a full skein left of that, um, and that's the sweatshirt color. So there is a cardigan pattern I found that I might try to do if I make a cropped version, or I think if I got one more skein of this, I would have enough if I also use my gray. And it is a beautiful cardigan. I'll try to link it below if I remember, but it has hearts on the side in your accent color, and I think it'd be really cute. And um, I could always knit the children's size and save it for when my daughter's older, but I haven't quite decided. <sighs> okay, so I've had a long day of dyeing yarn. Um, I'm gonna go home and spend time with my husband and my baby and maybe try to knit a little bit. That would be fantastic. We'll see um, if I'm able to do any of that. There were other things I wanted to show and didn't. Um, I will say I do have a few more project bags in the shop. Um, some of my bats and cats and I have one or two axolotl bags left. So if you missed out on my last shop update, there are still some bags available um, on there and you can find those on my website, on my website below. Before I go, I'm gonna show you one colorway that I recently dyed. Really hoping that the camera picks up this color because it's stunning. Um, it's coming up pretty well on the camera. Okay, so it, it's a little teeny but a uh, bit deeper because I've got this big white light next to me, so it's kind of brightening everything, but this is my blue velvet colorway, and it is so gorgeous. I mean, now when I think about blues that I enjoy, this is it. I think that this would be so flattering on every skin tone, and uh, I would like to make a sweater quantity of this for myself. I won't be doing that anytime soon because I've got plenty of other stuff to knit, but I do have a sweater, uh, well, I have four skeins of fingering weight of this available at this moment. I will try to put them on the website tomorrow along with some other res uh, colorways I recently dyed that I need to get up and photograph and all of that. I've got some pretty beautiful colors to show and um, to, yeah, put on the website. I'm losing my mind. So yes, um, I hope to be dyeing more blue velvet soon because I really love it and just having it in the shop makes me happy. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to head home now and talk to you soon, hopefully. All right, happy knitting and crocheting and all of the amazing, wonderful things. Don't forget to subscribe and goodbye. <laughs>